there, Tundra Nation, and welcome back to the channel. Today on Tundra Tactical, we are going to be discussing some of the worst upgrades you can do to your firearms, from wrong optics to gimmick accessories and home gunsmithing fails. So sit back, close that Reddit thread, and let's start the show. America! First up, we have optics with way too much magnification. This is often found on Magnum revolvers or on rifles that either don't have decent accuracy or fire around that can't reach out to distance without using some sort of artillery calculations. If you have a 44 Magnum hand cannon with a magnified optic on it, you either play way too much Call of Duty or you read way too many Soldier of Fortune magazines. You have what we call Yosemite Sam syndrome because you think wheel guns are the perfect firearm for every situation, including long distance hunting. You most likely have the practical accuracy of a cross-eyed ferret and hope that using some sort of scope will turn you into the most mobile sniper the world has ever seen. While you may get lucky every once in a while and score an effective hit on that elusive spike you've been baiting for months, the rest of the zoo patrons are far less impressed. The description given to the police after this incident accurately described you as wearing a fishing vest that looks like it was the first thing that Caldor ever sold, and your foam in the front mesh in the back blaze orange hat with a browning buckmark on it will make you easy to identify in a lineup. Oh, and this also goes for the guys that put side rail optics mounts on their AKs and then top it off with a four to 12 scope ordered off of a website that drop shipped it out five months after the purchase was made. You are hoping to become the modern Vasily Zaitsev, but in reality, you're just the walking and unfortunately talking joke of the town. Your lack of understanding of what makes a gun and ammo accurate leads you to think that if you zoom all the way in with that partially zeroed scope, it's gonna make those loose tolerances and out of spec steel case rounds shoot just as good as a hand loaded Christensen rifle. All right, folks, let's just face it. There is no way to turn that Kalash into a sniper. The ghost of Mikhail himself would come back from the grave just to tell you, Niet, rifle does not work like that, comrade. Your groupings are so wide that they should have a pilot car in front of them with a sign that reads wide load. But you decide to forgo this since the last time you tried, your mom got excited and came waddling out of the house in a nighty that can double as a boat cover. That's a huge bitch. Next up in the worst upgrades you can have for your guns, we have the random drum mags that you find at a gun show. You went to your local gun show to get evidence that it's better than the gun show at the Denton County Fairgrounds, but instead you got suckered into buying a random drum mag for your Mini 14 that has no markings on it. You understand the accuracy issues of your rifle, so you've decided that volume of fire is your only chance. Unfortunately, you don't understand that a poorly made drum mag will cause more feeding issues than trying to shove a 50 Action Express round into a Ruger 1022. Your crap drum mag will have more feeding issues than trying to give a hyperactive 10 month old his Gerber strain peas. This most likely was the product of a skilled craftsman from another country where the most advanced mode of personal travel is an unfucked donkey. What did he say? It has all the reliability of Joe Biden giving directions to a place that he's never been before. After just a few minutes, your gun is jammed and upon inspection of the chamber, you see a double feed. Oh, that gives you flashbacks of watching that unmarked cassette at the back of your parents' closet. Freak. Ah! Get out of here. No oh, thank God I'm blind. Pro tip, kids. Never watch that unmarked VHS tape in the back of your parents or grandparents' closets. If you do find one, just throw it away or be prepared to speak with a mental health professional. Hey, if you want something that will actually run and was made to standards, then you should check out CMMG and their new Mark 47 Descent, available in 16 inch and now 12.5 inch variants. Combined with these zeroed muzzle devices that come as standard, this is truly the next step in innovation for the fans of the 7.62x39 cartridge. If that's not your style, CMMG has something for everybody, from your standard ARs to 22 conversion kits and heck, 
even the 5.7 Banshee. CMMG has all your needs for quality guns to fit any role, so go click the link in the description below and get yourself an upgrade today. Oh yeah, don't forget to tell them Tundra sent you. All right, next up we have all of the home gunsmiths that watched a video of a dude in overalls with a southern accent so thick he sounded foreign using a Dremel to modify some poor Milserp rifle into some sort of inbred backwoods abomination. Now they too have gone down to the local hardware store and gotten a complete Dremel set and they're ready to take on the firearms of the world. Somebody needs to intervene and say these six most important words in the world of firearms. Bubba, put down that power tool. Obviously, the first thing that you do is go home and polish the feed ramps on every single gun that you own, including putting a flare on the chambers of that old revolver you have. Hours later, every single gun in your collection has suffered some sort of damage to its vital parts. You even manage somehow to make your 1911 more reliable by loosening the tolerances even more. Who needs properly fitted slide to frames when you can reduce the weight and contact points by simply removing 50% of the material. You're recklessly gutting more material here than a surgeon while operating on quaaludes. Between this and a sawzall with a blade duller than your IQ, you can take on any gunsmithing project that might enter that overly smooth brain of yours. You've even come up with your own proprietary bluing process. What you don't realize though is that using Krylon to cover up the surface rust is more like what your mom does with makeup before going out to her third OnlyFans meetup this month. And I think you missed the point when your idea of salt bath nitriding is dropping the entire gun into a jacuzzi with a case of Morton salt. Hey, speaking of covering stuff up, we can't forget the guy that spends all his training money on every accessory he sees for his AR. He's got an LPVO, an offset red dot with an accompanying offset magnifier, somehow, an IR light, and a white light with a thumb switch for both. Even with all this aim assist installed on his $400 Freedom Week PSA rifle, his practical accuracy is reminiscent of a pirate that has two glass eyes. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I think I've seen guys in pajamas, Aloha snack bar, a rifle over their heads and be more accurate. Not to mention, this probably adds about eight pounds to the rifle, so of course he needs some way to support it. The somehow worse than Chinesium grade bipod was straight and normal when it arrived, but after installing it and resting the rifle on it, well, it became about as straight as Ellen DeGeneres. The rifle is set up for all possible scenarios except actually being functional. The final straw for us was the mule stock so he can use his rifle as a Glock holster. That is stupidity perfection, folks. He even has a QD muzzle device for a can that he's never actually gonna buy. This particular autism has afforded him these luxuries since he has no chance ever of breeding. And then we have basically any bullpup kit for any rifle ever made. If you put one of these onto a perfectly functioning rifle, then I've heard there's a special place in hell for you right next to that Australian mustachioed man. You've decided that you want your gun to be both as ugly as a Caltech and as poorly functioning as a Sky Pistol. This is a crime against humanity and engineering that deserves a lifelong punishment. You know what, if, if the ATF doesn't actually get abolished, I think the only thing they should enforce is fines for doing this and nothing else. The positives of a better balanced and more maneuverable rifle are completely offset by how bad the trigger is and how ugly you've made that gun. Honestly, you'd be better off giving the redneck gunsmith dude $1,000 worth of meth and free reign to modify your gun, however the voices in his head tell him to, and I guarantee you, you'd end up with a better looking rifle. Now, I should say that I'm not talking about guns designed as bullpups because, well, I've already shit all over them and I don't feel like wasting my time doing it again right now. But suffice it to say, bullpups are a more egregious atrocity against humanity than the Star Wars sequels trilogy. Ouch, baby. Very ouch. Speaking of atrocities, next up we have any of those chassis systems you put your pistol in to turn it into a more rifle-like object. I mean, come on, seriously, just get a pistol caliber carbine. I'm not sure why you think a pistol dressed up to be a pistol caliber carbine is somehow better than actually something that is designed to be an actual pistol caliber carbine. I think that's how that sentence was written.
This would be something like putting your cat into a dog costume and telling people, hey, look at my new German Shepherd and all the tricks he doesn't do. Yeah, there are several of these things out in the market, the kits, not the cat dogs, by the way, and none of them will actually make you more proficient with your weapon. They will, however, make you more proficient at coming up with excuses as to why your gun isn't the most idiotic thing on the planet, so maybe you have a future as a case lawyer. I mean, all you're doing here is adding more possible failure points and adding complications that include partially learning a new manual of arms, something you haven't even mastered the original of yet. All you have now are two different ways to use your pistol, neither of which you're particularly good at. Congratulations, bud. You're a failure twice. This is basically like using one of those size enhancing sleeves when you're with your wife, only for her to get confused and call out Darren's name instead. You're not fooling anybody, bud. In fact, all you're doing is reminding them of how unsuitable you are for the task at hand and being left insulted and demasculinized. Let's not forget the vomit-inducing act of over-aggressive stippling. This is often the first project of new gun owners that have a soldering iron laying around and access to the internet. You take a nice pristine pistol that already has an appropriate amount of grip designed into the gun and melt it away, turning it into some sort of torture contraption that could even make Jigsaw cringe. You have convinced the brain cells that somehow avoided being damaged by inhaling plastic fumes that with more grip, you won't slap that trigger like it's a 14 year old left at home with an unfiltered internet connection. Go away, Baton. By the time you're done and realize what a mistake you've made, well, it's too late. It's now some kind of hideous, surreal artwork, like if Shane Gillis was some sort of Picasso hillbilly. Now all you can do is hopefully sand it back down as close to factory new as possible while still leaving enough material to get it done professionally. This is unlikely as you've essentially destroyed the grip the same way your GED destroys any chance of you making more than $20,000 a year. What you actually need is some more training and less upgrades, folks. Most of these problems listed in this video would be rectified by a few training classes and some practice on your own. But hey, it's too late. You're never gonna bring these abominations to a real class for the fear of the ridicule that will take over the better part of the weekend. Do better, people. Subscribe.